Sports really used to be my entire life. When I was six years old, my parents took me to a birthday party uh, of a girl in my class in school at the time, and she was a figure skater. So we went to the ice skating rink. Not many memories from my life are as crystal clear as this one, uh, but I'll never forget stepping on the ice for the first time and skating. Even though I was super young and I knew nothing about the world around me, I knew in the moment that I stepped on the ice for the first time that it was something that I wanted to do again. After that birthday party, I begged my parents to take me to the rink every single day. And just like that, my love for skating was born and eventually my love for hockey would evolve from it. I spent my entire childhood playing hockey. From that young age, I, with my younger brother, got into the hockey leagues in Nashville, and then we quickly started playing travel hockey, and this led to a many year long endeavor of traveling around the country with our parents and playing hockey in a bunch of different places. Truly, if there was one thing that I could tell you about my childhood, it would be that hockey was the biggest part of it. It's what I did on every single weekend. It's what I thought about most of the time. My brother and I loved uh, watching hockey. We loved playing hockey video games. It was just pretty much the, the thing that mattered most to me in life. And my parents supported every bit of it, even though it was super difficult for them because they were having to spend a lot of money on the traveling and uh, the pads, the equipment, the ice time, all the things that went into it. They were also having to take us all the way up across the country to New York, St. Louis, Detroit, Boston, Providence, uh, Canada. We went to Toronto a few times. They really just supported us. It, it would have been really easy for them to have stuck us in the school soccer leagues or basketball leagues and just drove us to practice every once in a while down the street and, and that would have been it. But what they did was they allowed us to play hockey, which was much more difficult for them. And I loved it. And the way that I know that I loved it is because it actually used to bring me to tears quite frequently. If I didn't play well and I had a bad game, I was always hard on myself. And I would, I'd get really upset after the game and uh, I would start crying. And, and that to me just signified, even at a young age, that I had a passion for this thing. Now, if we fast forward uh, a few years, I was in seventh grade at a, a new big school that went from essentially seventh grade all the way through senior year of high school, so six years, and it was my first year there. We were required to play a sport in every semester. So I was playing hockey, of course, which covered about half of my year, but the other half of my year, specifically the spring, I needed to figure out what to do. At the time, I had been playing a lot of tennis, so I was thinking maybe I should go and try tennis at this school, but after actually trying it a few times and, and playing in a few tennis matches, I just couldn't do the mental side of tennis. I was so used to having a team around me to support me and to take on, uh, to shoulder some of the weight of, of competition that trying to play tennis alone and being the only one responsible for my successes and failures, 
I just really struggled with that. And so somewhere along the line there in my seventh grade year, the idea of playing lacrosse was, was just brought to the surface and it made too much sense. It, it was a team sport just like hockey, but it was on the field. We were able to use sticks just like hockey and it kind of had the same general idea. You have a ball, you're trying to get it into a goal. So I started playing lacrosse and I fell in love with it again. It was just like this wonderful thing where all of a sudden I was playing a sport outside in the grass, which I hadn't really done in, in a few years. And I was playing with my classmates. Uh, when I played hockey, I played with kids from all over Nashville, all over the South, really Huntsville, Atlanta, uh, Texas, uh, a bunch of kids that we knew from, from all over the place. But when I was playing lacrosse, I was at my school. I was playing with my classmates and I loved that. By my eighth grade year, I was voted as a captain on the eighth grade lacrosse team and it was that year when I developed my dream. When I was in eighth grade, there were three seniors at our school, so high school seniors, that were decided to play Division I college lacrosse, and I just thought that that was the coolest thing in the world. At the time, I remember looking at them, they were like grown men. I, I could have sworn they were 25 years old, not 18, uh, and, and they were going to play Division I at these awesome schools. They were really big, really fast, really good, and I just decided in that moment that my life's goal, my dream, was to play college lacrosse. So moving into high school, I had my mind made up. I had my goal. My goal for high school was to play college lacrosse. So everything I did was in service of this goal, and I really devoted myself to it. I, I was the guy that would stay after every lacrosse practice and and stay and hit the wall for like an hour at least. I would work on my footwork, I would work on my speed, my conditioning. I just really wanted to get better. And the unfortunate thing for me was that I was a little bit behind on the developmental curve. So a lot of kids, boys especially, develop at different periods of their life. And I was kind of a slow developer. So really throughout my entire childhood and even into high school, I was smaller, I mean, I got taller in high school, but I was physically smaller. I wasn't as, as strong or fast as some of the other kids. So I was definitely a little bit behind developmentally, but I made up for it with practice. I mean, I got a lot better. I got really good stick skills and, and I was able to, to do a lot of things on the lacrosse field that the kids around me weren't able to do. And it was really just from that practice and dedication. When I tell you that this was the thing I loved, I mean it. I, it was the thing that I cared most about. I was still playing hockey as well at the time. Uh, hockey was taking up most of my year and then lacrosse was taking up uh, the rest of the year. And it was just that, that's what I cared about. I loved lacrosse, I loved hockey, I loved playing sports. That's what excited me and that's what I wanted to do with my time. In terms of reaching my goal and getting recruited, it didn't really start for me until my junior year. But basically in my junior year, I started to put together film of myself playing lacrosse and just sending it off to coaches. I, I figured that my ship had pretty much sailed with division one because a lot of those schools were recruiting kids very early on. And it was a little bit later for me at that point. And also, like I said, I was just developmentally behind and I don't think I was quite at that level of, of talent or ability, but I started to get some interest from a lot of division two and division three schools. And I started talking to some coaches coaches who were interested in bringing me onto their campuses to visit the school and talk about playing lacrosse there. So I went through the recruiting process and my parents took me around to a bunch of different colleges to see different schools and to consider the possibility of playing college lacrosse, which was super awesome. But the school that I focused in on and, and settled in on was the University of Tampa. The first time I went to Tampa, it was absolutely beautiful. I mean, we're talking about Tampa, Florida here, right there in Tampa Bay in the city. Uh, it's a beautiful campus, beautiful buildings, uh, awesome dorms. And, you know, amazing classroom buildings right there in Florida, palm trees everywhere, the sun shining, there's like a pool in the middle of campus. And on top of all of that, they had the best lacrosse facilities that I had seen out of any of the schools that I'd been to. Huge training room with all sorts of stuff, hot tub, cold tub, uh, you name it, big weight room, an equipment room for all the stuff big locker room for all of us, and a dedicated lacrosse field with a massive set of stands, all for lacrosse. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever, and in my communications with the coaches, there was some interest there from them, so I decided to make it official, and I decided to attend the University of Tampa to play lacrosse. And that's exactly what I did. I went there, and I started to play, and um, I really could talk about playing college lacrosse for days and days and days, 
that isn't the point of this video, but just to kind of sum things up, I had spent in my entire freshman year of college there playing lacrosse and it was extremely grueling. It was mentally tough, it was physically ridiculously challenging. Uh, just the amount of time and effort that we put into lacrosse was truly a full-time job and that really affected my grades. The second video, I believe it's the second video that I ever made on this channel a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away was about my GPA, specifically in terms of getting into dental school. And that GPA was in my freshman year, very, very low. It was a 2.9. And this was specifically because of lacrosse. I just didn't have the time, energy, or uh, the ability to put forth the effort to do really well, especially in like my science classes and my math classes, which math has always come difficult to me. And my grades were really suffering. I was struggling in lacrosse because it was a full-time job. We were running, lifting, practicing constantly every day. And, and then on top of that, I was struggling in school. I wasn't getting the grades that I knew I needed to get for my future. I guess it's important to mention here that through all of this, through all of this time, I had been encouraged by my father specifically, uh, who is a dentist himself, to become a dentist myself. This was his thing, really. Uh, my mom supported whatever career I wanted to get into. She, of course, specifically supported dentistry because she knew it was a great career. Uh, but that's what kind of my dad and my mom had been pushing me into for many years. It wasn't just necessarily my dream, though, at the time. My dream was lacrosse. That's what I cared about. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't necessarily care about grades in school. And that's not to say that I didn't try. I knew that eventually I was gonna have to care if I wanted to, to make something of myself after lacrosse. But there's just this interesting time period when you're young and you're enjoying this sport and you're putting all of your time and effort and passion and soul into it. And the prospect of not doing that in the future and, and working a job, it's not something that you really wanna think about. Long story short, I struggled at Tampa and I ended up having to make a very difficult decision, which was leaving Tampa and transferring back home to my home state of Tennessee to attend the University of Tennessee in Knoxville with the hopes of getting better grades and eventually being accepted into dental school. That's what I did and it was the best decision that I've ever made in my life. Unfortunately, I had to give up something that I loved and something that I dreamed of doing for many years. And that's the point of this video. You see, playing lacrosse at Tampa was my dream. It, it was what I wanted to do and I fulfilled that dream. I remember playing in my first ever Division II college lacrosse game where I got some time, I got some ground balls, I actually made a little bit of an impact on the game. And at one point I remember running with the ball and just thinking like this was this was it, this was what I wanted to do and I was actually doing it. And I think there's a great deal of merit to that. And achieving a goal like that is, is something that's very special. But at the same time, I realized that my future was probably gonna struggle if I continued trying to chase this goal of just playing college lacrosse. I knew that for me personally, I, may, I needed to make the decision, which one am I gonna really focus on here? Because I can't do both to the best of my ability. Ultimately, the decision was hard, but not because I didn't know which one to choose. I knew that I needed to pick school. I knew that that was the smart decision. It was the right decision but my heart was with lacrosse. I chose to go to school and focus on school. And the decision was really good. I ended up going to the University of Tennessee. I had like a just under a 3.8 GPA there at the University of Tennessee. And I was eventually accepted to my current dental program here at UTHSC in Memphis uh, to study dentistry, become a dentist and spend a lifetime in a career that I think will be very good for me and for my family. And that's the thing, um, sports for basically everybody on the planet last from that young age at about five or six all the way through usually somewhere in the early 20s. And that is just the reality of the situation. Our careers, on the other hand, they last for many, many years. 20s all the way to what, 60s usually, or 70s, possibly even 80s for some people. That is really a lifetime of work. And the pursuit of doing something that you love and doing something that is good for you and for those around you 
is extremely important. So the, this whole topic, it's very, very special and important to me. And I'm planning, by the way, for this to be a long rambly video because I just have to get this topic off my chest. Uh, this topic came to me from a lot of questions from my viewers, students who are like the way I used to be. They're playing sports right now, most of them at the college level, and they're trying to juggle with this idea of giving sports up to pursue dentistry. It feels like a very difficult decision, but my advice to you is very simple. You have to think about your future. You have to think about your life's work and your career. And I understand how difficult this is to hear because I've explained to you how much sports actually meant to me. But the sad truth of sports is that an extremely small, minuscule percent of the people who play sports will end up doing it at a level that pays them extremely well. In other words, sports don't lead most of us to success in a career. They might lead to connections and things of that nature, and they certainly do a whole lot of good for us. I'm not advocating against sports, I think they're fantastic, but there are things out there that we can pursue, like dentistry for example, that will really give us a great opportunity in life. And that is important. So if you're struggling with this idea of giving up sports to pursue dentistry, to pursue medicine, whatever it is that you want or think you want, my advice to you is to first ask yourself the question, are you able to continue playing sports and to chase the goal of becoming a doctor or whatever it is and do the both of them really well. There actually are people out there who can do this. There are multiple people in my dental class who played sports all four years of college did so at a high level and are now studying dentistry with me in my class. But for someone like me, it just wasn't possible. The, the time, effort, energy, blood, sweat, and tears that I was putting into lacrosse was completely taking away from what I needed to be putting into school. I also want to urge you to ask yourself the question, is being a doctor really what I want? There are a lot of people who tell themselves that they wanna go into medicine or dentistry because they seem like great careers and they tend to be great careers. But not everyone needs to be a doctor or a dentist. They're not for everyone. So do some soul searching. And if you're toying with the idea of giving up something that you love like sports to try to pursue being a doctor, you wanna know that being a doctor is really what you want. This topic just, it really hits home for me. I loved sports, they were my life and I truly miss them even to this day. I think learning how to lose learning how to be coached, learning that practice makes you better and allows you to achieve greater things. Those are all lessons that I wouldn't have learned if it hadn't been for many, many years of playing sports. And I don't think I would be the man that I am today or in the position that I'm in today if it hadn't been for all those years of athletics. But at the end of the day, I had to give up sports just like everybody does eventually. Even Tom Brady, who is still struggling with the idea of retiring, will eventually give up sports. It's just an inevitability of life. So friends, I hope that some part of my story here, my testimony with sports, gave you a little bit of perspective on this topic. I hope that it gave you a little bit of clarity in your own journey. I understand how difficult this is for people, and that's why I've seen the messages that have been sent to me and understood the passion behind those messages. So thank you very much for watching this video. This one was a heartfelt one and I really enjoyed making it, especially putting together some old, uh, some old stuff, old videos and, and photos from my childhood growing up uh, with sports and all of that. Thank you so much for being here, for being part of this and for, for watching me put something out there that I hope will last for a lifetime. That's all I have for you today. And as I always say at the end of my videos, I will see you in the next one.